So for today's video, I thought I'd do another one of those what if X season from the past had the modern point structure, because there are so many seasons where you can figure out if results got flipped, and we can offer opinions here and there on where the pivotal moments were. It was it this race where the championship was won, and this race where the championship was lost. Last time out for the debut of this mini series, I looked at the 1997 season in what I thought would be a good starting point. And we saw, spoiler alert, that if the 1997 season used the 2023 point system, Michael Schumacher would be world champion. And when you look at the results, yeah, it's a no-brainer and not really a shock. Michael was way more consistent than JV and won the championship. I actually made a maths error in that video to the shock of literally nobody. Villeneuve was fifth at the Japanese Grand Prix and didn't win it, so Michael wins without that DQ or with that DQ. And one that kept coming up in the comments was the 2008 season, which is a season that had a few more ups and downs versus the 1997 season, and had probably the best ending to a season of all time. And that would have been the case if it was Hamilton, Alonso, Vettel or anybody else that year. The title being won on the final corner of the final Grand Prix, with weather playing a part. Massa was champion for all of 39 seconds. 100,000 local hearts sinking. It was also a season that had a few controversies and a few OMG moments. Now I'm actually recording this part of the video before I dig into the spreadsheet because I want us all to find out together and it'll be a big unveil for me and also for you. Well, I mean, I'll be finding out a few minutes before you do because I actually have to type everything out and hit sort, but it means that this is technically a reaction video because you'll be getting a genuine reaction to the results. Bald Midlander reacts to hypothetical 2008 season. Anyway, we need to assume here then that the races that could make or break the season will be Malaysia, where Hamilton was an idiot and got a penalty for blocking, Bahrain, where Hamilton finished 13th, the Canadian Grand Prix, where Hamilton was an idiot and drove into the back of Raikkonen while the Ferrari was stopped at the end of the pit lane, Silverstone, where Massa was last after having more than a handful of spins, Hungary, where Massa's engine let go a couple of laps on the end, Spa, where Hamilton was given a controversial penalty that handed Massa a win, and obviously, Singapore. Crashgate. So there's going to be a fair few swings going on, and it might get quite interesting because we might see a new winner, we might see people get shuffled around, we might see people do incredibly badly compared to how they did in real life. So, time to open up Excel and hope that my maths is correct. Okay then, so I have put together a spreadsheet of the 2008 Formula One World Championship under the 2023 point structure, which you can see on the right hand side of the spreadsheet there, 25 points plus one for fastest lap. That's only if you're in the top 10, however. 18, 15, 12, down to one point a tenth. And then 2008, it's the 10, 8, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 point structure designed to help out some of the back marker teams, but it turns out teams like Jordan would have scored more points under the old point structure than they would under the new point structure, which is kind of a, a bit of a twist of fate or irony for those kinds of teams. So I've been through the, the spreadsheet, I've double checked the maths, I've triple checked the maths, auto summed it, made sure everything is hunky dory, every single driver from that season has been calculated. All that's left to do is do the big reveal. Now, I will say, because I've already seen the results, um, this hasn't been rigged, this hasn't been modified, this hasn't been manipulated, there hasn't been any delicate rigging of the results to make sure that it turns out in a specific way, or, you know, no biases, nothing that I can be accused of. This is 100% real maths that has determined the winner under the new point structure. So, with me saying that, you can probably work out where this is going. If you are a Felipe Massa fan, you might want to look away now. Because Hamilton still wins by one point. And I, 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 when I saw this, I couldn't believe it. Genuinely couldn't believe it. It's turned out exactly as it did in real life. Just one point between the two of them. 244 to 243 and Hamilton ends on a 44 hashtag blessed and stuff like that but there's a few extra columns on this uh spreadsheet compared to the 1997 spreadsheet which I think I'll I'll just quickly go over now you can see new on that far left that's the position that they're in because of the new point system and you've got the real uh finishing positions next to that 
Those two columns largely irrelevant because they've pretty much finished exactly where they did in real life. A couple of exceptions we'll get to in a second. On the other side, you've got total, which is their 2023 point system tally. And then next to that is their original uh, 2008 points tally. So, yeah. Oh, and um, no pen basically is the if the results stood from Spa. So, Hamilton, Massa, again, one point, and I swear to you this hasn't been manipulated or whatever to make it dramatic or make it as it is. Genuinely, that's how it happened uh, when I calculated it. Uh, Raikkonen and Kibitza finished on equal points in real life. But Raikkonen jumps quite far ahead of, of Kibitza because he's got uh, he's got a fastest lap there, he's got a fastest lap there, a fastest lap there, fastest lap there. Just picking up those fastest lap points. And obviously the difference between the the points as well. Uh, Kibitza got his win in Canada. Dropped off towards the end here. Um, I, I say dropped off. That's at 18 points, not 18th place. Uh, but yeah. 12 points between the two rather than finishing on equal footing. Alonso finished one point ahead of Heidfeld in reality. That's bumped up to two points. You've then got Kovalainen in his little bubble by himself. Vettel wins in Monza. Uh, picks up four points there. Don't know why that's... Uh, it's four points for eighth. I don't know why that's coloured in how it is, but it's just me overlooking it. Just one cell on the spreadsheet. Um, then it drops to Trulli. Bit of a gap to then uh, then to Glock. Glock beats out Weber by a single point, as opposed to beating by four points in, in reality. Uh, there's four points between Vettel and Trulli there. Jumps up because of Vettel's win. You've then got PK and Rosberg on equal points under this system. Two points in reality. Uh, actually, under this system, this is one of the exceptions. Um, Rosberg, because he's got two podiums versus PK's one, which he got in Germany, uh, Rosberg will leapfrog PK there. And I think, likewise, Coulthard, because he's got a podium here, will jump Nakajima, because they're on equal points. And then just one point behind Barrichello. Button gets 11 versus 3. Fisichella gets 1 because he finished 10th in Spain. And then Sutil... No points. And then I, I didn't even bother filling in these two. This is super aguri. You can bin them off. But that's pretty much it. And if you look at it, because we're using the system that's in use today, which is the uh, point for fastest lap one, this championship was settled by Massa not getting a fastest lap. If Massa had got a fastest lap at any of these other Grand Prix, maybe China, Bahrain, um... Who got fastest lap in Bahrain? Can't, can't see it off the top of my head. Um, oh, it's Kovalainen. So, Co right. Kovalainen stopped Massa from winning the championship. What a wingman. If Massa had got fastest lap there with the win, Massa is world champion because Massa's got six wins, Hamilton just the five. So... This guy, this guy's the real MVP. If you if you are McLaren, obviously, um, that's mental. I hadn't spotted that before. It's good that you actually catch it on camera, isn't it? So, so that is pretty much it. I don't know if anybody else can see anything. Uh, for me, championship was lost because of Kovalainen grabbing that. Uh, fastest lap in Bahrain and also Hungary because Massa would have won that Massa was on course to win that race but then his engine blew up with uh, two laps left was it or on the final lap I can't remember or well, the start of the final lap I should say um, Singapore's irrelevant I think people just want some, something to blame or someone to blame for that but it's it's Bahrain and it's well it's, it's Hungary in real life it's Hungary in Bahrain in, in this scenario but if, if anybody else can spot anything else going on here that I, I can't see because I'm just numerically illiterate, um, do leave it down in the comments. Leave a comment of where you think Massa lost the title under this format, uh, or where Hamilton won it under this format. 
get a discussion going leave any ideas for any other seasons you want me to do get that discussion going and uh while you're scrolling down like the video if you think i've done a good job with this video um it's hard for me to freeball this kind of thing because i'm just so used to doing scripts massive thanks as ever to the kind folk at patreon for the continued support and if you want to help out with the bill paying around here like buying up the photographs for the story time stuff pressing issue stuff or even stuff like this then you can donate through the patreon link in the description well, there's also links to discord and to my socials well the super thanks down there if you just want to do a one-off donation without tying yourself into a monthly plan we'll call it but you know what i mean so until next time, I've been Aidan Millward. Have a cracking day wherever you live in the world, and I'll see you all again soon for another video. Goodbye.